welcome uh, to the new video uh, this video is a continuation to the previous video which i was discussing on uh, predicate and quantifiers so before i start let us quickly recall what we discussed in the previous video uh, we talked about what is predicate right uh, we talked about what is a propositional function px and uh, if I assign a value of x, then the propositional function becomes a proposition which can have either a true or a false value. Then we also talked about the universal quantifier and the universal quantifiers that we talked about was for all or for every. And we have tried understanding that what does this for all x px represents, right? So to start with, let us take the first example here. In this example, they are asking us that what is the truth value of this statement for all x px and the statement here is x square is less than 10 and as you are clear that uh, for every uh, such, uh, you know, a statement, we should have a very clear idea that in what domain we are uh, working, what is the domain under consideration. So, uh, here the domain under consideration is all the positive integers which are not exceeding 4. So, basically the domain is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, to uh, check the uh, you know truth value of this statement, first of all, we need to be uh, aware of what is the truth value of the function uh, px at 1. So, if I talk about p1, the p1 refers to the statement 1 square is less than 10. So, 1 square is less than 10 is certainly true. If I talk about what is P2, so P2 refers to the statement 2 square is less than 10, which is certainly also true. If I ask you what is P3, so P3 is 3 square is less than 10, that is also certainly true. But if I talk about what is P4, so P4 is 4 square is less than 10, which is not true because P is, uh, 4 square is 16, 16 is certainly true. Uh, greater than 10. So, as uh, we have uh, discussed earlier also that for all x px to be true, it should be true at all values, means p1 should be true, along with that p2 should also be true, uh, p3 should also be true and p4 should also be true. But uh, here we noted that this is false, so the truth value of this statement is false. Uh, like here 4 is the counter example. We have got one value of x for which this statement is false. So that is why uh, for all p x p x becomes a false statement, right? I think uh, uh, if you recall uh, from the pre previous video example, I can take one more example here. Uh, the same example which I uh, uh, took in the last video also. That suppose I talk about uh, any section uh, in your university or college and uh, suppose that section is being called uh, something like uh, uh, 2021 section L1, L1 section of 2021. And uh, if I say that there are 60 students in this section and I am making a statement like P of X where uh, X is uh, talented, right? X is talented. Now, if I am talking about x is talented means I am talking about the students of this section. So, there may be a student, let us call that a student x1. So, what does this px1 refers to? px1 refers to that x1 is talented, right? Uh, now, uh, for this statement, for all x px to be true, every single student should be talented and of course, uh, uh, we need to define that what is a talented student because that is a vague term. Uh, as such, but if we are clear about whom I am calling talented, whom I am not calling talented, in that case, uh, for all x p x will be true only when every single student means all the 60 students are talented. But suppose uh, 59 of them are talented, but one of them is not talented, then it will become a false statement. Or if two of them are not ta talented, then it will also become a false statement. So, the point is that every single one should be talented and if we can find one counter example for which uh, the student uh, is not talented, then uh, in that case, uh, this statement, uh, the previous statement will become false. Uh, okay, 
I hope I am not speaking too fast. And let us talk about the existential quantifier. So, existential quantifier is uh, represented as there exist, right? Something like this. So, suppose I write there exist x p x. So, how do you read it? You read it like there exist uh, an element x in the domain such that p x or for our practical purposes, we just read it x, there exist x such that p x, right? Now, to understand this, let us take uh, some examples, right? Now, uh, if I say, uh, the, if I take, talk about the previous example uh, that I took, that x square is greater than 10. Suppose px is the statement, that is x square is greater than 10. And the domain I have considered contains four elements, that is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, if I write, there exist x px. And if I ask you, that is it true or false? So, first of all, we already have seen that P1, which is like 1 a square is greater than 10, was false, right? P2, uh, which was like uh, 2 a square uh, is uh, greater than 10, which is also false. P3, which was like 3 a square is greater than 10, that is also false. But P4, which was like 4 a square is greater than 10. So, this is a true statement, right? So, here for uh, this statement to be true, for there exist x p x to be true, we have to see that what is the truth value of p1. If p1 is true or if p2 is true or p3 is true or p4 is true. So, here we noted that p4 is true, means we have one value of x for which this statement is true. So, this statement will become true. Did you get this point? In case of existential quantifier, we just need to find one value of x for which px is true. Right. This will be false when uh, px is false for every value of x. Okay. And you can just uh, look at this, uh, you know, table to understand it and keep this in mind. When I talk about the statement for all x, px, when it is true, it is true when px is true for every x. When it is false, when there is an x for which px is false, means we just have to find one counter example for which px is not true. And if I look at this statement, there exists x, px. When it is true, if there is an x, if we can find just one value of x for which uh, it is true, then there exists x, px will become true. When it will be false, it will be false when px is false for every value of x. Okay. So, let us understand it uh, through some examples. If I uh, look at this example, what is the truth value of there exists x, px? So, uh, what is the statement? A statement uh, that is x square is greater than 10 that I already have discussed. So, let us move to the uh, next example. Determine the truth value of each of these statements if the domain contains the set of all real number. Now, what is the first statement? First statement is there exists x, x such that x cube is equal to minus 1. So, you can clearly see that we have a value that is x is equal to minus 1 for which minus 1 cube is equal to minus 1. So, the moment I got one value for which this is true, so this statement will become true. I don't care about whether it is true for or false for other values. We got one value and we are done that it is true. If I talk about the next statement that there exists x such that x to the power 4 is less than x square. So, here also we can take any value. Suppose I take a value like x is equal to 1 by 2. So, what is 1 by 2 to the power 4? 1 by 2 to the power 4 is certain, which is equal to 1 by 16 and 1 by 2 a square which is equal to 1 by 4. So, certainly 1 by 2 to the power 4 is less than 1 by 2 a square. So, this statement is also a true statement because we have got one value of x for which uh, this statement is true. There may be other examples also, but the moment we got one, we should proceed. We should not look for other values because uh, for this to be true, uh, one of the values for which the px is true will be sufficient. 
if i talk about the example c here uh, for all x uh, minus x square is equal to x square right you being a student of mathematics uh, uh, till now are very clear about that minus x square is certainly equal to x square yes or no because we know from our uh, you know algebra days that minus x square is equal to x square so for this is true for every value of x we can't find any x right we can't find any x for which this statement is false so that is why this is also a true statement because for every value of x minus of x square is equal to x square when it will be false ladies and gentlemen this will be false when you can have one value of x for which this is not true but there is no such value so that is why this is a true statement and let us look at uh, this for all x uh, 2x is greater than x so if i take the example of x is equal to suppose minus 1 right so 2x will be minus 2 minus 2 is greater than minus 1 this is false this can't be true because uh, minus 2 is less than minus 1 so we have got one value for which this statement is false there are other values even i can take 0 so if i take 0 i will get 0 is greater than 0 which is also a false statement because 0 is equal to 0 so since we have got one counter example so this statement becomes a false statement right